Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Almost, almost. Almost what? I almost caught Jason. Ah. Welcome into the show, the Fantasy Footballers, Tuesday, September 29th. Fresh off a Monday night performance from one Patrick Mahomes that while did not uh, it did not give me a victory over my arch rival nemesis evil villain Jason Moore it did put the fear of God into him <laughs> for the majority of the evening. Jason, Dude, your uh, you came out on top. I needed like nine hundred million points to catch you, and I got within fifteen. You got eight hundred million. It yeah, was, it was one of those things where we had said because you've got the Kelsey Mahomes stack, I need to be up by forty going into Monday night to feel like okay, well, this is a fair fight. And then I was up eighty. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, this thing's over. There's no chance. And then all of a sudden, Mahomes is going nuclear. And I'm like, what's happening? Thank goodness. Thank goodness the Ravens couldn't compete because I would have been in trouble. It was a fun game, unless you were the Lamar Jackson, Hollywood Brown, Mark Andrews fantasy manager. Oof. Because uh, this was arguably the worst game of Lamar's young yeah. career in quite some time. And... Mike, I mean, he just was not competitive. It, well, then, to not this wasn't just Lamar who had a tough game. I mean, you had Mark Andrews uh, dropping passes that he normally catches. I know that they were tougher, but it's you're you're Mark Andrews. You yeah. want you want to be labeled as one of the top tight ends in the NFL. You come down with that touchdown, uh, but man, Lamar looked he he looked very very tilted. That was. I think that's what stuck out to me the most is Lamar tilted the way that I would if I were playing that game and he wasn't able to shake that. Like, like snap out of it. Let's go. Let's get one big play in here. Get back in. He just – he spiraled out of control. And then, I, like, the culmination was that last throw to uh, Hollywood Brown, which was – Hollywood was, like, five yards separated. All he has to do is give it just a little bit of loft – and, Ho and Hollywood just walks in for a touchdown, and the game is – I can't remember if it was tied or just – with it's a one-score game if if they come through with that. But he was so tilted that he just chucked the ball. He'll bounce back. I'm not, this, is, this is certainly not bailing on it, Lamar, by any stretch, but that was – that was a bad, bad game. Through well, Lamar does not have a lot of experience being down. I mean, that's sure. just the truth. Uh, you know, I, I saw a stat where I, I believe the stat was he's twenty and zero and leading at half, and zero and six when down at the half. It, it, usually, they're just you know way up on people, and the run game works, and he doesn't have to come back. So, uh, you know, I I think as he gets more experience with that, hopefully he'll be better. Yeah, it's hard for it not to be mental for him against the Chiefs, too, because he just hasn't beaten Patrick Mahomes. And through three weeks of the fantasy season, Joe Burrow is a better fantasy quarterback oh, than Lamar no. Jackson. Oh. So That's tough. Now, now I, I, would, I would say don't hear what we're not saying. No one here is starting Joe Burrow over no. Lamar Jackson. No. No, it's just – Yeah, you're right. I saw your tweet, Andy, and – so many responses were, I have both. Should I make the switch? And the answer is no. No, no, no. You are you are not making the switch. Uh, other aspects of the game I thought worth mentioning. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, rookie running back for Kansas City. He didn't come through with like a, a huge game. But if this is the floor that we're going to see for Clyde, I believe he was uh, in half point was the number 12 running back on the week. And he would 20 carries – Ends up with uh, five receptions here. Like he's just – he's safe. Unfortunately, he got gadgeted out of the end zone with that play to uh, – what was Anthony Sherman? I mean, it was a beautiful design play, but I look, it, you can't be disappointed if your 
running back is out there giving you an absolute floor game and they're still a top 12 guy. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, Kelsey was not spectacular, but got you into double digits. Oh, I just missed my more call on Kelsey by one catch. It Tyree Kill, McCole Hardman both scored. I mean, Mahomes accounted for five touchdowns. It was a great game for him. Uh, he's currently the number three fantasy quarterback. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, the is the website. Appreciate everybody listening, reviewing, supporting the show on Apple Podcasts, listening on Spotify, ad free on Stitcher Premium. Wherever you listen, thank you for tuning in. Do you have any takeaways on the Baltimore backfield? Well, uh, stay away. I, yeah, okay. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it through three weeks, I mean, the touches, uh, Gus Edwards is out touching J.K. Dobbins through three weeks. Ingram's touches are not seemingly very high value right now. The offense is not – they weren't put in a position where they had to do a lot for the first two weeks, and then they couldn't do a lot last night. So Ingram's still the back to start if you're forced to start one of them, but it's not been pretty. Yeah, that, that's how I'm handling it too. Like it's – it's a it's a wild world to be here going into week four, and generally speaking, you know, no backfield is off limits. You're like somebody there will is worth stashing on your bench, evaluating, seeing what's going on. But but we have Tampa Bay, Detroit, and Baltimore, and it's like I don't want any of these guys just clogging clogging my bench because I don't see anyone emerging from either of these backfields. It seems like Daryl Henderson's a better start than Mark Ingram right now. Oh, yes, 100%. 100%. All right, uh, I think that does it for the Monday Night Breakdown. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. All right, we have to talk the headline news first here. Sure. Uh, this is breaking news this morning, and m more information, more news could come along after this show is recorded, but the uh, the Titans are dealing with three players and five personnel testing positive for COVID-19. They played the Vikings this past week. Both teams have suspended in-person activities, and the latest report this morning from multiple sources is that the Titans facilities in-person work is not going to happen through Saturday at least. They're shutting it down. So... Unfortunately, we're kind of staring down our first significant COVID disruption for the 2020 season. We do not know whether the Vikings, who played the Titans, have any ramifications from the Titans' positive tests. But for fantasy purposes, you need to... I mean, this is the waiver show. We're getting into waiver names today. You should start your planning today for the possibility that the Titans and Vikings don't play this weekend. And I've seen some people speculate about maneuvering bye weeks around uh, that could facilitate this game because it's the Titans and the Steelers playing this week. So if the Titans don't play, the Steelers don't play. So if you have Titans or Steelers, right now you need to be thinking along those lines beyond the waiver names. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. I mean, I don't have much to add on there. I mean, it's it stinks for like Justin Jefferson. It was going to be one of the probably the the hottest waiver claim of the week, wide receiver, rookie wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. But this is what we were talking about in preparing for the season. Get those IR spots ready uh, so that people are not punished for this this circumstance. One minute ago, uh, Chad Graff, uh, verified reporter out of Minnesota. The Vikings statement includes the line, as of this morning, we have not received any positive results from the Vikings testing Okay. following Sunday's game. Okay. So uh, right now it seems like the, the riskiest situation would be the Titans-Steelers matchup. So Juju, Deontay, Henry, Tannehill, Brown, that whole group of players you could see you know them having a bye this week. Those two teams having a bye, and then and then playing through their bye in week seven or eight. Jason, did you have any other information for us? Is that a fair summation this morning? Yeah, I think that's a fair summation. That breaking news obviously changes the waivers outlook for Justin Jefferson. So that's yeah. that's great. You would expect the nothing to get in the way of the Minnesota Vikings, and and we'll know far more information as the week goes along. Just keep listening, and we'll let you know uh, as soon as we know when it comes to what's going to happen. Would they move the game back? Is the game just going to keep playing? The NFL has said 
Yeah. They are a next man up yeah. league. That whatever it doesn't matter your circumstances. It doesn't matter if you're missing ten players. If you can feel the roster on game day, you're playing. So, you know, I we don't have the information, but it, based on you know that type of an attitude, I, I think it's not out of the realm of possibility that they just <laughs> they can't get in the facility this week, and then they're playing. I agree with you. And if there's three players that are on the COVID list and everybody else is available, they will play. The NFL will do that. Um, all right, Chris Carson, minor knee sprain, one- to two-week injury. Some reports think he'll play in week four. Uh, I think Pete Carroll said we'll see. Yeah. I, I, I would, think he probably won't. I think he probably won't play as well, which we will be talking about. Carlos Hyde. Yeah. All right, Chris Godwin hey. could miss multiple games with a hamstring injury. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he won't miss multiple games. Everybody misses multiple games with a real hamstring injury. He got an MRI for it. This is what took him out of the season at the end of last year. And it's not good. No. You can normally play with a fake hamstring injury. <laughs> but you cannot yeah, play with a real one. What is that just like declaring you have a hamstring injury? Well, if you're what, say you're a say you're a kicker yeah, and you yeah. miss, and you miss a oh, field right. goal or you have a Ooh, bad kick, ah. Ah, my hamstring is oh, a little tight. Both of them. I'm gonna play through it though. I'm tough. Both hamstrings. Oh, <laughs> Philip Lindsay trending in the right direction might be able to play on Thursday night versus the Jets. Will they, that get you to tune in? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But I I wanted nothing to do like Phil Lindsay was a drop because we knew he was gonna miss multiple games, but. If he's on your waiver wire right now and you're hurting at running back and he's going to play the Jets, it could be worse. Not much, but you're right. Dallas Goddard. Uh, oh, my. I did not see this news. High ankle sprain was the initial report. Now they're saying a fracture? You, It's rare when it turns out it's not a high ankle sprain and it's bad news. It's worse? Uh, usually, yeah, so uh, there's no official timetable yet. Uh, but uh, Doug Peterson said it's he's going to miss some time. All right, Jordan Reed went from not a serious injury to maybe a couple weeks to now injured reserve and could miss six to eight weeks. This is the Jordan Reed story. Yeah. Yeah. For his entire career, unfortunately, and I feel bad I'm just for happy. him. But yeah, it, it stinks. But if he's if he's injured, I'm happy. It's a a, a lower body issue, not a not concussion back to the head. Sure. Yeah. Michael Pittman, this was surprise news yesterday, surgery to repair compartment leg syndrome in his calf. Expected to return after the week eight bye. That'll have waiver wire considerations today. Mm -hmm. Nick Foles starting week four against the Colts. I cannot believe that uh, head coach Job Nagy for the Chicago Bears, has he's broken his complete competitive advantage. On a, on a Monday, How he does did it this. feel to simultaneously mock him but also – He's undefeated. Like uh, he's totally uh, it's totally not, working. Like the illusion is working. Well, not only is he undefeated, but he's actually not at all doing the thing that you're back in and accusing him of. So he's he's doing exactly what you would do and declaring the right. starter, but he's we still get the jab in. I love it. That's, you gotta, that's right. Look, you, you don't get a free pass because of like multiple years of, of being a butt face, and then you're like, I do one thing right? No. Hey, I will say this. I will say this. When Matt Nagy came to the Chicago Bears, I was excited. I thought he was, I was a good too. hire. I, was I thought he was a good offensive mind. Maybe it's the fact he's had Trubisky as his – like, what if the Bears' offense is actually good with Foles? Uh, just throwing it out well, there. It's, not a, it's, it's a greater than 0% chance. They, uh, they were good with Trubisky the first year Nagy was there. I mean, they were much better than it has been. So, if we want to, you know – Spend a couple seconds praising Nagy for for a moment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're three zero. Oh. The pro it, it's this compounding thing. It's like they add Jimmy Grandpa to the roster, and yeah, they're three zero. Oh. So um, look, a, a magician builds his house out of cards. So we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens with the Chicago Bears. I don't know. What happens with a house of cards? Uh, a gust of wind comes oh, in and blows okay. it all down. Hey, before we move into the waiver wire, which stay tuned. You got to get yourself ready. This episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head & Shoulders, available at Walmart this year. We're doing a new segment every Thursday. We're going to be picking up our up to 100 players of the week because Head & Shoulders is taking your hair to 100. Get rid of those flakes, that nasty goop, that garbage flowing out of your hair when you're not using the Head & Shoulders. So we're trying to find those guys, those diamonds in the rough that we think will take it up to 100. And look, 
Not too bad. Not too shabby this week. Andrew. Andrew Holloway. Devin Singletary. Yes, him. He took it up to 100. Look, you didn't know that Zach Moss was going to miss. Maybe you did, and you didn't want to relay that information. I knew he was a little bit binged <laughs> up. I mean, yeah, that was the report, to be fair, so that's to be fair, why. You, you did do that. Jarek McKinnon running back for the San Francisco 49ers. Oh. He absolutely took it to 100. Unfortunately, his rib injury might be taking that quickly down to zero. Jason, would you like to speak to your pick, Drew Sample? Oh, yeah. My uh, my guy, Drew Sample, took it up to 100% catch rate on his target. <laughs> so I would, say we're three, I would say we're three for three this week. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective yeah. these days. Yep. Uh, take your hair up to 100. Take your completion percentage up to 100. Take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders. Available at Walmart. Pick yours up today. Check out this Thursday's episode. You're going to hear our up to 100 picks for this week. Put me in, coach. You notice, you notice how I hit the right drop this time? I'm very impressed. Yeah. Yeah, I know how to host. All right. <laughs> Important waiver show today. Gulp, I need to bring up some drop candidates because you can't add a player to your roster without dropping somebody. So I'm going to I'm gonna name some players, and I'm just going to receive the information from you two. I'm not going to contribute any thoughts. Okay. Because that would be too painful. A.J. Green. No. Can't drop him. Deshaun. I've never had him. <laughs> Deshaun Jackson. You can drop him. Yes. Marvin Jones. I would not drop him. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to Jones. T.Y. Hilton. I pass to Jason. No, uh, no I'm, I'm not dropping T.Y. Hilton. All not right. with Michael Pittman out, Paris Campbell out. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, Great. Yeah, it's a good point. Only hold had on. to play a half against the Jets. Yeah. Jarvis Landry has not been a good three weeks for Landry. Yeah. Sure, I would be willing to drop him. Yep. Darius Slayton. I'm still holding – I'm I'm holding on to Slayton. Man. He's he's a tough call here. I'm trying to remember. So the, the Giants, here's the schedule coming up for them. They got the Rams this week, Cowboys, Washington, Philadelphia. So you do have a good stretch here. So I think I would hold on to Slayton instead of just, you know, it, it, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll compare them to these waiver wide receivers we're going to talk about. All right, let's start with the wide receivers, and let's start with some rookies because it was a week three breakout for a number of players or an emergence, depending mm -hmm. on how you define it. But Justin Jefferson, the aforementioned big monster breakout, there was a lot that changed for Justin Jefferson this week. Nine targets, seven for 175, and a touchdown. Uh, he played 78% of snaps, but what changed for Justin Jefferson is they moved him out of the slot. The first two weeks, he was primarily running in the slot, something he did a lot at the collegiate level. They put him outside more often in this game, and I really like adding Justin Jefferson this week over pretty much any other option. We've seen rookie wide receivers with opportunity have big-time fantasy seasons before, and what I like about it is this team, whether they want to or not, is going to have to completely change their identity this season. They do not have the choice. They do not get to be disciplined, run first, they're going to be down in games. This defense lost another key member this week. It's just inevitable. They're going to have to throw the football. And if Jefferson is a primary target in a Diggs role, how do you not take a shot at him? I'm curious what you two would spend fab-wise on Justin Jefferson after the breakout performance. Yeah, personally, I, I would be going – pretty hard after Justin Jefferson. I, I, you know, you, you never want to chase the points, but when you see changes that cause the points and like you outlaid, Andy, there are several reasons. Look, the Vikings need Justin Jefferson. They desperately need him to have to step up. I was listening to beat reporters before this last week while they were disappointed with Justin Jefferson. And they were talking about how, how badly they need Justin Jefferson to, to come along quickly. And all of a sudden the next game, He's emerged with his upcoming schedule. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about Houston, Seattle, and Atlanta. I couldn't, I couldn't make a better schedule for any wide receiver. So, um, yeah, I, I would go hard. I would, uh, you know, for me, I don't usually spend up at the wide receiver position, but I'd be dropping thirty plus percent to get him. Yeah, the, the only thing I'll add in there, I, I'm agreeing with you guys. Jefferson's the top guy I'm going after. 
this might be your opportunity to trade low for uh, for Adam Thielen. So, uh, good, like, Justin Jefferson is good news for Thielen. Uh, Thielen is the, still the wide receiver one, had the down game, while the now the bright lights are on Jefferson as everyone's going to be clamoring to add him. Go shoot a, a low ball offer for Thielen. I really don't mind that. I mean, the arguments about their offense having to carry the load through the passing game even more. And that schedule. Yeah. Oof. All right. Here's a player I am not in on for the oh, waiver wire. Okay. Brandon Ayuk. He went five for Ayuk 70. In. He went three for 31 and one on the ground. And I have kind of three reasons why I'm not as in on Ayuk. I mean, if you can add him on the cheap and you want to speculatively add, I'm cool with it. I'm curious your guys' thoughts. Here's my three reasons. One, it was the Nick Mullins experience. So we, you know, Jimmy G was not there. Two, Debo Samuel should be back in week five. Uh, he's going to walk right into the number one role. And number three, you saw the, uh, the majority of this fantasy output came because of a big rushing touchdown. A little anomalous, not in the passing game. I mean, five for 70 is not terrible. No, he, he was fine. But this was the Giants. And so I'm not as excited about this as a lasting breakout. No, no disrespect to Brandon Ayuk. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be a lasting one in this in this offense. What do you guys think? I don't uh, I, co I completely agree with Andy personally. I I Ayuk is someone I would put in a you know a, a zero dollar claim on at the end of my waivers and have a speculative ad. But I think you've got you know one more week without without Debo and that week you might have a backup quarterback. Basically, all the reasons Andy just said. I'm not I'm not believing that the breakout will happen and continue as the season progresses. I'm a little more bullish than you guys. It, he could be a one week one week rental. Uh but still he was a first round pick. They are using him like they would use Debo and the report is Debo is likely to return in week 5. I uh, am old enough to remember when Debo might show back up in week 1. And then all of a sudden he's on the IR. There's no guarantee that Debo is actually going to be back for Week Five. I'm not going after Ayuk as hard as I am going after Justin Jefferson. You think you can start him the next couple weeks? I did. If I think you could start him next week against Philadelphia. Yeah, what? Like, dude, Nick Mullins. It's it's fun to make fun of Nick Mullins because he's just kind of a, a quite a character. But he threw for almost 350 yards this week, and I know it was the Giants, and Philadelphia is not the Giants, but. Nick Mullins and, and Ayuk will still be able to get it done. Probably a good time for our fantasy PSA after three weeks of the year. Yes. But if, if you're part of that one or two 0 oh 3 crowd, we remind people every year. Look, we've been doing this show for uh, over five years now. Story after story after story after story of 0 oh 3, 0 oh 4, 0 oh 5 teams winning championships. Do not give up. Remember, yeah, look. My league of record team with Patrick Mahomes succumbed to Jason's high scoring week. I'm sitting one and two in that league with a great team. It's just the way fantasy goes. Sometimes you score a ton of points, you end up with an L. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever's happened so far this year, it can happen in reverse. You can you can run off a bunch of weeks, and if other teams are given up, just get into the playoffs with your team. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the the thing is, is half of your league is doing worse than the other half of the league, and half of that half also known as one quarter, will start to quit. You <laughs> will not be the quitter, and you will start winning. It, it happens every year. Just get in the playoffs. All right. What do you guys think about T. Higgins, Chase Claypool? In terms of speculative waiver ads, what would you spend fab-wise? Are you adding both guys? I uh, So Claypool, to me, he, he's looked great, and you're going to have to monitor Deontay Johnson, whether he's – uh, out or not, but T. Higgins is actually the more interesting guy to me. Um, we we haven't. I don't think we've mentioned this on the show, but John Ross was a healthy scratch. He just didn't suit up. They wanted to get Higgins the ball, so there was a reason. You know, he had seventy nine percent of snaps this week. He led Cincinnati wide receivers in snaps. Uh, this is the future of the Bengals. the The future is. Joe Burrow, T. Higgins, the first two picks that they had in this draft, and Higgins is great. Like he's, I love this college tape. So I'm, you know, when I look at these rookies, I would order them: Justin Jefferson, T. Higgins, Chase Claypool, Brandon Ayuk. All right, other big time wide receiver additions. Are you adding Alan Lazard this week if he's still available? I, I think you can pick him up and play him. Mean, he will be 
taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. And I, uh, I think that on Monday night that Aaron Rodgers is going to light things up. Even with Devontae Adams back, you yeah, feel I mean, like Lazard would be a good start? You, yeah, he'll be a good start yeah, as a, a three. I mean, you're not expecting 146 yards and a touchdown when, when Devontae Adams is back. But Would you drop Marvin Jones to pick up Lazard this week? Ooh. Who do, yes. who do the Lions play? I, I would. I can't remember who the Lions play off the top of my head. Who's looking that up? Saints. <laughs> the Saints. All right. Saints. Uh yeah, I think I'd I'd rather this week I'd rather play Lazard against the Falcons. All right, are you adding Anthony Miller after the change at quarterback last no. week? Two for forty-one and one. I'm a no as well. He's no. just not. He's he's too difficult to predict. Yeah, no. Nope. He goosed the week before. He he would be a speculative ad. You know, a zero dollar bid to me. I I would be fine. You know, if I if Nikhil I had Nikhil Harry or Anthony Miller on your bench right now to to oh, wait that's, and that's see. A, that's a great. Uh, I I would take Anthony Miller. I, I want to see wow. if the Foles change happen. Anthony Miller is just a super good wide receiver. He hasn't been involved uh, as involved as as we want him. But with you know, there's going to be a change here in the offense. By yeah, the way, but, but he's he's not playing. He's barely on the field for over half of the snaps. Would you go? Would you rather stash Chase Claypool or stash Anthony Miller, Jason? Yeah, that one's close. I would go Claypool because right. if I Deontay Johnson is. If he doesn't get out of the concussion protocol, you've you've got a big opportunity. James Washington wasn't that bad last week either, by the way. So sure. if Deontay misses and you need a, a shot in the dark, James Washington could be interesting. But both of those players could be subject to not playing this week if the Tennessee-Pittsburgh game doesn't happen. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. By the way, Marvin Jones took advantage of no Kenny Galladay or limited Kenny Galladay to a best performance of – Wide receiver thirty six over Come the on, first Marvin. three weeks, so hasn't been great. He needs Kenny Galladay there. Uh, Greg Ward, Corey Davis, uh, Corey Davis mostly rostered, but Greg Ward isn't. And last week, eleven targets, eight for seventy two and a touchdown. He plays San Francisco, but there's no Djax most likely this week. There's no Goddard this week. Greg Ward sits there as is Carson Wentz still throwing him the ball. 11 targets, 8 for 72 I, and a I, touchdown. Greg Ward came through with a big game, but on the road, San Francisco. On the road, Pittsburgh, Baltimore. I'm, no, thank you. Yeah, I'm the <laughs> look. Would you rather, rather add Scotty Miller if oh, God yes. went out? Yes, yes. Scotty Miller is pretty interesting. Char well, Chargers, Chicago, Green Bay, but... So the whole Buccaneers situation is interesting because Scotty Miller did not come through week two. I mean, he he could have had a touchdown, he dropped it, and then he would have been fine for fantasy purposes. But what is interesting about it is Justin Watson was the one. Superstar. Super, yes, Jason's favorite fringe player of all time, Justin Watson. He's the one who came in and took over the Godwin role. He's the one who played in the slot. He got all those targets. Justin Watson is currently hurt. Like Just Tyler Johnson, who's the rookie, Tyler Johnson for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I believe it was a fifth-round pick. Does he – he got on the field a little bit, about 30% so of, the, of the snaps. Is he the one who actually comes in and is the slot player? Scotty Miller is the one who is the safest of these three players. But it's, it's a bit of a game of musical chairs, yeah. if you will. It's But someone is going to come I think we're going to start – yeah, I, I agree with you. Someone is going to come through, and those names could very well be the players that come through. I just don't think we're going to – recommend picking up and playing them in in your in your redraft leagues if you want you know a a, a pivot in a dfs lineup that's not going to have a lot of people on it that's maybe a way to go but i i'm going scotty miller or nothing here and i, I just in my last piece i'll throw out on this is they take on the chargers chris harris i don't recall the status of his injury but he went down and he had to get helped off the field if if you have a new slot wide receiver, he's out. And Chris Harris is not covering that player. Like you have a backup now covering the slot wide receiver who Tom Brady's throwing the ball at. That is very interesting to me. All right. Chris Harris Jr. to miss up to six weeks. Yeah, right, he, he's you. out. Uh, we were going to see Godwin and Chris Harris, and we're going to see neither of them. Yeah. All right. Braxton Berrios has been the wide receiver 16 <laughs> and the wide receiver 22 yes. <laughs> over the last two weeks. Rumors out there that if the Jets do not win on Thursday, Adam Gaze will be 
sadly removed and no longer able to be a focus of this podcast. Now, are we rooting for the Jets to win oh, or golly. for the Jets to lose? I am rooting for Jets fans. I want them to have a reprieve <laughs> from the horror show. So, yeah. Uh, and it doesn't matter are what we there, root for. The, the Jets can't win. Are there so. still Jets fans? Yes. The okay. Jets fans are proud people. The uh, the just J sad proud. So people. are they rooting for the Jets to win or the Jets to lose? They have to be rooting for the loss. Oh, that's the worst when you have to root for your own team to lose. The the line for the Denver Broncos and New York Jets this Thursday night matchup, it's now at forty. The over under this thing opened up under forty for an over under. I do think Barrios, you can add him. I mean, two straight top twenty four weeks. You still play four quarters even if you're the Jets. You have to throw the football. Sure. But he's he is so reliant, though, on the other guys being hurt, which we need an update on if they are. Like, Brashad Perriman, yeah. what's, what's his health? What's Jamison Crowder's? If Jamison Crowder's back, Braxton Berrios oh, I agree. goes back to the, 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 the berry bushes. <laughs> I mean, Berrios is only if Crowder and Perryman are out. Yes. But if, he, if they're out. And he, only if you dislike yourself. I would play Braxton Berrios over Brandon Ayuk if oh wow the, if the if the depth chart stays the All same. Right. We'll revisit well, the that. Nice, the nice thing is you're going to know before that Sunday game because the the Jets are on Thursday night football. But there are reports that say Crowder could play this Thursday. So no, I that would change. I'm it all. not so you know you got to make your decision now before you go for the waiver wire. Um, and, and, the, and truthfully, Barrios won't cost you anything. You could put him at the end, and if you get him, you get him. Does Jamison Crowder, that, that news, was that before or after he heard that Adam Gaze <laughs> might be released if they lose? Yeah, I think it was before, so maybe he will <laughs> Oh, uh, I tightened it up, fellas! Up. But, does he, but does he want to play with Adam Gaze? Because it's been good know. for him. All right, running backs. I'm going to bring up some running back drop candidates. Are you dropping J.K. Dobbins? This no. is a, you're not. No. See that that one's interesting to me because that's it's difficult to separate hopes and reality for uh, J.K. Dobbins. I'm not dropping J.K. Dobbins. I I have a hard time drop, dropping Tony Pollard, and Tony Pollard is irrelevant. You can't possibly start him while Ezekiel Hel Elliott is healthy. He's just you know that insurance option. And Dobbins is that. If any one of the three go down in that backfield, there'll be some clarity. More work would go to the other side. So I think you can hold on to Dobbins, a guy who, in a pinch, you could, if you have to put him in your flex, you have a decent chance of having a relevant fantasy game. That's exactly why I can't drop Dobbins. Like, are you dropping Mark Ingram? Because they're, no. they're putting up the same stat lines. Through, uh, through three weeks, it's just been very difficult to – I mean, have we had a good game from Dobbins? That week one, right? Yeah. Okay. It's, it could be any of the three on any given week. Uh, I know we were talking about it – I talked at the top of I don't want – I don't know what to do with these guys and clog, but, but bringing that name up specifically, I would not be dropping – Dobbins. Cam Akers? J.K. Dobbins is currently the running back 35, and Mark Ingram is the running back 42. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah, but J.K. Dobbins has two carries, one carry the last two weeks, yep. six fantasy points, six fantasy points. I mean, two touchdowns in week one will obfuscate the reality of the situation. But Cam Akers, DeAndre Swift, are you dropping Cam Akers, them? yeah, I, I, I'm fine dropping Cam Akers and, and DeAndre Swift. I don't think – that in the case of DeAndre Swift, zero you know, carries let, last week. Let's say there is an injury to one of the three, similar to the J.K. Dobbins. I don't. I still wouldn't trust the other two. This is the Lions' backfield. Um, I'm not. You know, it's different than the Ravens' uh, offense. And Cam Akers is currently injured and is is definitely losing time when he gets healthy right now by the play of Daryl Henderson. Who's your favorite running back at? Ooh. They, Are you buying into Rex Burkhead, Mike? I, I think you should add Rex Burkhead, but I think you also should add Damian Harris, and this is it, – it's tough because Rex Burkhead came through – You know, he, I mean, he turns into kind of the, the nominal the, – the receiving back when James White is out. James White is still dealing with his personal issues. 
Uh, we don't know when James White is going to be back. It's it's just it's really really messy in New England. So I'm I'm willing to you know you're a winning team. I'm willing to stash one of these guys on the bench if uh, I I don't like the people that I'm stashing the situation I'm moving forward with. But the name you have to talk about, Jason is going to be super super excited because the volume is just overwhelming. Miles Gaskin. From the Miami Dolphins, <laughs> what do you do? Like, how is he not? If he's there, if he's on the the waiver wire, how is he not your top ad this week, Jason? I'll let you explain. Uh, he very well might be the top ad. I mean, I we we talked about this a lot on the SiriusXM show. Um, so I don't I don't know if the Foot Clan has heard a lot of the conversation. I was talking down. This was before the Thursday night game. Uh, Miles Gaskin as someone who he's getting all the work he's getting the touches um, but he's not really coming through with great performances I, I you know my example was yeah he's gonna touch the ball a lot but do you really care if you start the running back 30 on a week and he well outproduced and outperformed what the the hopes were for Gaskin this last week he had 27 touches you have to pick a guy up like that but the point still stands he, he was the running back 23 with 27 touches, that's impressive work. Because if he's down near the goal line, it's he's never going to get that opportunity. It's, it's the Jay House show down there. But in a PPR league, Gaskin looks good in the passing game. So it, you you could take a flyer on him. But it's a it's a matter of what you need. Are you looking for just general depth? That's Miles Gaskin. Are you looking for a start? To me, that's Carlos Hyde or maybe Jeff Wilson Jr. Yeah, I mean, I think a. Whenever a player goes from nine rushing attempts, seven rushing attempts to 22 rushing attempts, and he's young, there's an opportunity there for him to become the guy in that backfield. It's why people didn't buy into James Robinson uh, until we saw it. But if you had bought in after that first week, you would have been happy because one of 22 touches can go the right direction for you. Yeah, you got to chase. He's that my volume. favorite ad because he has the most staying power of this group. Uh, Carlos Hyde. Is tough. It's tough to make a fab decision on Hyde if you don't know if Carson's going to be out on a Tuesday. I, I'm more willing to spend up on Gaskin, but Hyde is much more available. Yeah, Carlos. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Jay. Uh, you, you said it right. Gaskin has the staying power. Carlos Hyde is a one or at best two week rental. I do think, though, again, if you have to start someone, I, I don't think Chris Carson plays this week. I'll be really surprised if they put him out there. And if he's not out there, I think Carlos Hyde has a really good game and should be started. Um, but, yeah, it's it's just difficult not knowing for sure. But I do not believe Chris Carson plays this week. Would you rather skip on Gaskin, Burkhead, and Hyde and just grab Jeff Wilson, who had a big two-touchdown week? We know that they're going to move the football on the ground. Philadelphia, the matchup for Jeff Wilson – it could be Jeff Wilson and Jamichael Hasty right. this week. I mean, Mostert, uh, it's a Sunday night game. Um, I don't I, – I think Wilson might be your best one-week start. Uh, Miles Gaskin uh, is the guy I'm going to go after. If, if we're still including his name in there, he's available in about 50% of leagues. Jeff Wilson would be my second grab here, especially uh, over these names of – I don't think that uh, – look, McKinnon's probably out. We know that uh, Tevin Coleman is out for San Francisco. I would be very surprised if Raheem Mostert makes it back. So this matchup against Philadelphia, it's going to be a whole bunch of Jeff Wilson Jr. So I, I'm I'm in on that. I think he's a good play. All right, right now the only update we have is Jeff McKinnon's day-to-day -day with an upper rib injury. Adrian Peterson. No. Adrian Peterson had 22 carries. By the way, you skipped over. You, you threw out that you would sign Damian Harris after Sonny Michelle was the RB15 on the week. Yes. You would add Damian Harris over Sonny Michelle. Uh, yes, I would. Explain yourself. And for the record, I would add neither. Yeah, neither. I, I was. I'm talking like this is deep. These are people I'm stashing because I don't think that that one week will be – that's not going to translate moving forward to to Sony Michelle bouncing back. Okay, not, not to me. Adrian Peterson, twenty two carries this past week, none for DeAndre Swift, three for Carryon Johnson. 
Uh, this is the second time that he's been over 15 carries for Detroit. They should be more successful moving the ball with Kenny Galladay as a part of this offense. Adrian Peterson for a spot start. I guess, man, but you, this is like Tampa Bay. Like, you you benched Adrian Peterson week one, has a great game, 14 for 93. Like, yeah, all right, Adrian Peterson, spot starter. Get in there, buddy. Seven attempts. Then you're and, like, and not only not only that, but this last week with 22 attempts, he didn't get 10 fantasy points. He didn't help anybody. If you did, if you did start him and you're like, yeah, he started him and he got 22 carries, you're like, oh, man, I wish I started Jeff Wilson. I'm not getting the impression you're excited about any running back waivers at all. That is probably that's, correct. That's the message I'm getting because none of these players, either one or both of you, are not excited about them. No, nope. I, I agree. I I would go Gaskin, Hyde, Wilson, or Gaskin, Wilson, Hyde in e either one of those orders, and then outside of that, I'm I'm very not excited. All right, let's look at the tight end position. Dallas Goddard, you need to let him go. He's going to be out. Yeah, Evan Ingram. Do you drop Evan Ingram or do you hang tight? Five or more targets for three straight weeks. I think you probably hang tight. I think you try to trade him. Uh, I was able to <laughs> trade him last week. He's just got a big name, and uh, there's there's you know a lot of people out there that still believe he's going to get it going. He had a tough matchup the the uh, the opening couple of weeks. There's there's narratives that can be spun, but I don't want to start Evan Ingram, and I don't want to have two tight ends on my roster so I would be willing to uh cut Evan Ingram if there was what I felt a better tight end on the waivers but now that we're going into week three there's there's probably not you know you're you're Jonu Smith's and Gasicki's and Vance these guys have all been picked up so I think you're gonna have to f facilitate a trade uh Brooks is this the list of the top 12 tight ends thus far this year yes I believe so Kelsey, Johnu Smith, Noah Fant, Tyler Higby, Mike Gesicki, Jimmy Graham, Darren Waller, TJ Hawkinson, Moali Cox. Yeah. And Hunter Henry, the top 10. No Hayden Hurst, no Mark Andrews in that top 10 so far. Oh, Mark Andrews, man. Disappointing. Uh, After that first week, yeah. you thought it was thought it was done deal. But he's going to be great. I'm not worried. All right. What about Dalton Schultz this week? Are you adding Dalton Schultz? He has been... Pretty good for two straight weeks. He's going to see opportunity. We know that Dallas is going to be in higher scoring games. Uh, it gets to take on Cleveland. And Cleveland, Giants, Arizona. So Dalton Schultz, he, he is a – he's probably the top ad at the tight end position. Maybe Jimmy Graham pa, is like the, 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 the savviest move. I mean, Nick Foles – targeted him when he came in the game Jimmy Graham has been putting up numbers through the first three weeks of the season I just can't I can't do it man uh, Jimmy, I, I'm, Jimmy I'm Graham, fine with adding Jimmy Graham Jimmy Graham is the pickup this week he's the guy yeah. you need to get from waivers I it, it, he's he's a corpse of his former self but I think that if if he had, if this Jimmy Graham fella had never had a past history and he was just an older guy who's, you know, Darren Felsing it, um, and you see the opportunity, you see the snaps, you see the money they paid him, we'd go, yeah, we, I mean, I think you can start this guy. He's touchdown dependent, but you can start him. And, you know, we can't let the fact that we so enjoy making fun of Jimmy Graham, <laughs> which we do. Um, I'll speak for myself. I do. Uh, we can't let that get in the way of the fact that he – is a, a an okay pickup on a a spot start. It's the week two one target. That, yeah, but that, it's different quarterback and I know. Right? What about the week one seven targets? I like that. Or the six for sixty, so it wasn't just touchdown dependent this past week. Oh, man. All right. And he was I'll, the number one overall wide uh, tight, tight end. end. Yeah, I'll let you guys take the take the wheel. look. It's it's a mess at tight end. We we talk about it all the time. It's a huge mess, and Jimmy. Jimmy Graham's going to be targeted, and he's going to be targeted around the goal line. That's enough for me. He'd be my number one ad. Dalton Schultz would be my number two ad this week. Um, Drew Sample would be my number 88 <laughs> ad. And then um, – What about that catch rate, man? Oh, 100%, that, he took man. it to 100. <laughs> Logan Thomas, Moali Cox, are they on your list? Or are, are you looking at Moali Cox now saying, well, Jack Doyle wasn't targeted. Maybe it is – it's time for Moali Cox with no 
I mean, you've got injuries there on that offense. I'm a hundred. I'm one hundred percent fine taking Mo Mo Alley Cox. If you wanted to take Mo Alley Cox ahead of Jimmy Grandpa and Don Schultz, I, I am. You got uh, gigantor, I'm cool with that because <laughs> the reality is he's he's a monster out there. Yes. He's he's a gigantic human that is being targeted by a quarterback that targets tight ends is back to back good weeks. I yeah, I mean Moali Cox much more than Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas might have all of the behind the scenes metrics that are great. He's getting targets, he's getting red zone work, he's snaps, his routes all fantastic. But Dwayne Haskins isn't going to get it done. Philip Rivers will get it done in the short intermediary uh, throws to tight ends. Defensive streamers to Broncos. pick up. <laughs> the Broncos <laughs> With the Jets on Thursday night, you're not expecting the Adam Gaze uh, primetime hyperdrive? Well, I, we saw a hyperdrive last week. So I don't – if they're going to go to, like, warp speed this week. How long does it take to get to Mars with Adam Gaze's <laughs> hyperdrive? Mm. I mean, uh, that – About a uh, few millennia? Yeah. Yeah. You better figure out cryo sleep. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I would if I'm looking at a defense, I'm I'm going to look to the Broncos I, uh, this week. I love I the Rams. I uh, the Rams take okay, on the Giants sure. and you know you got Aaron Don, uh Donald, you've got big playability, Ramsey and the turnover prone Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones over under one and a half fumbles this week. I'll take the over. All right. I will take the over on turnovers for sure. He will turn the ball over more than twice. No, I, I, I think the Rams are great. In fact, all jokes aside over the you know jokes at the expense of Adam Gase, I think the Rams might be a better pickup than the Broncos because their defense is better. The Broncos came into the season with a pretty good defense. They've just lost so many of their valuable pieces. That's that, the uh, philosophical better defense versus better matchup, and I'm not sure the matchup's much different. Rams aren't heavily rostered, and they have Washington the following week. Yeah. So I would add the Rams, then Broncos. Um, the Jets have Denver as well. <laughs> so you could add the Jets because oh, you could have – I mean, we're going to have an announcement on the quarterback, and we don't know who it is. We have who we hope it is. We know who I it is. I snake, man. We know who uh, it is. But, you know, it's either Blake Bortles, Brett Rippon, or Jeff Driscoll. Oh. So it's going to be fun no matter who it is. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, when, when you've got an over under at 40 that you expect to hit the under the defenses are in play. All right. Let's, uh, by the way, there's a waiver wire summary article on the website by Lauren Carpenter, the fantasyfootballers.com You can check out, let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. All right, we're looking at streaming quarterback options for week four, and I'm going with I'm going with the king. Oh! Jared Goff has the Giants. He is currently, by NBA Jam rules, heating up. Back-to-back -back yes. games with uh, three touchdowns, and the Giants do not intimidate. You can add Jared Goff. He's only rostered in 37% of leagues. He could go from heating up to on fire this week, so I think he's a great streaming option. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, I'm going to go with the rookie, Joe Burrow. I believe that he has shown enough. They're letting him throw the ball. The matchup at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars aren't one that is going to terrify you. And, you know, I we, we've already said it. He's, he's off to a good start three weeks in. Uh, he's the quarterback 10. And at some point, you've got to be able to trust him to throw him in your lineup. And the nice thing is he could get it done with his legs when plays break down. And that gives you that solid baseline. And I'm taking a quarterback. He established facial hair dominance this past week. Ryan Fitzpatrick, quarterback 11, quarterback 5 in his past two weeks. He gets to take on Seattle. He's going to have to throw <laughs> against the Seattle Seahawks. And Seattle is letting up points to the quarterback position a top seven performance each of the last three weeks uh, it it's at home for Ryan Fitzpatrick he is widely available when Ryan Fitzpatrick is is heating up when he's on fire when he's cooking whatever you want to say Ryan Fitzpatrick is like the go-to stream guy he just gets it done and so I, I think he's in a great spot here against Seattle 
Love the matchup. Love the play. All right, let's do a little mailbag. 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 <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Oof. Eric in Galveston, Texas has a question. Would you trade Joe Mixon right now for David Montgomery? No. 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 Maybe. No. Okay, so uh, then it stands to reason. No. Would you trade David Montgomery for Joe Mixon? Yeah. I... <laughs> Somehow Even... it's a different question for well, Mike. Like, yeah. I, the I Tariq would, Cohen I... injury doesn't factor in anything here. It certainly factors. I mean, in. like, who's gonna Cordero? Cordero, but no, Cordero will get. He'll get uh, attempts. Yeah, but, but the targets are gonna go to David Montgomery. I agree, but it's just a matter of. I mean, Jason brought it up yesterday. Fifth most carries in football, Joe Mixon. So it, the way that I look at it is this: Who's gonna have more touches rest of season, David Montgomery or Joe Mixon? I don't. Let's know. I don't know. It's a tie to me. They're both gonna have a ton of touches. So who's the better player? It's Joe Mixon. So I, 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 I lean the Joe Mixon side still, even after three disappointing weeks. Mike leans no direction. I, he just <laughs> falls off the cliff. He blows in the wind. I think I would take Montgomery. Wade in Kentucky. Hey, guys, I have Michael Thomas. I'm 0-3. Oof. My wide receivers and running backs are struggling. Is it time for me to possibly trade Michael Thomas? If so, what kind oh. of value should I get for him? No, 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 no. I would, I would not. You, if you trade Michael Thomas, here's what you did. You absorbed the three bad games, the missing games, the injury games. You absorbed that from your league. And then you gave Michael Thomas coming back to someone else. Personally, I'm I'm not gonna tilt trade at 0 and 3 with Michael Thomas. I'm gonna I'm gonna let him come back and be on my team. All right, uh Kevin in Bloomington. I've been offered Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. For Clyde Edwards Alaire. Thoughts? I would be left with Drake, Montgomery, and Gaskin as running back options. This is a good question because it it kind of asks, do you buy into Russ having one of those years, right? If you if you knew in week three that Lamar would give you that all year long or Mahomes from two years ago, right. you would have done a deal like this. With Drake, Montgomery, and Gaskin, though, I don't think I'd do this deal. Yeah, it's not enough depth at running back. When when you're talking about Gaskin, who is a fine waiver pickup that you hope can continue getting touches but be more efficient with it as your third guy, you're going to run into bye weeks and injuries and problems through the year that are a little tough. I would be willing to trade a decent running back for Russell Wilson because I think it's going to stick, but only in a very rare situation where I'm loaded at running back and – I'm not going to trade someone as good as Clyde edwards alaire All right, if you have a question, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We'll do some more mailbag uh, on tomorrow's show. We want to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring the podcast. The Nick Chubb signed jersey yesterday, $87.75. Autographed Beckett authenticated jersey. Hundreds of daily auctions. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit at Pristine Auction. Dot com. That will do it for today's show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and we will smile. Get those waiver claims in. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.